and that means it's time for the tip of the week. Something to make your Tai Chi just that much better. And I've got a great one for you today called Looking Down Your Nose. Hi everybody, it's David Dorian Ross. Welcome to the Cherry Blossom Studios. Today is day number 32 of 100 Days of Tai Chi. Got a great movement for you. It's gonna be um, so familiar because it's kind of another repeat of what we did yesterday. Anyway, I'll talk more about that in a second. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Come on in, let's do some Tai Chi together. <laughs> and that's all coming up right after this. Today we learn a movement called the separation of the right foot. We sometimes call it turn and kick with toe, although that's a little misleading as I'm gonna show you today. So today's lesson is going to not only teach you a new movement, but also give you another layer of yesterday's movement. Today's movement is called separation of the left foot. So it's kind of a mirror image of what we've already learned. Watch me one time and then we'll do this together. So we just finished doing the separation of the right foot. Now I'm gonna definitely need to turn to give you another angle on that. So I'm gonna to turn to face the camera right now. I'm gonna leave it in the regular view before I flip it, just so that you can see what I'm talking about. So we've just finished doing the first kick. Let me make sure I'm in camera frame here. Just finished doing the first kick. And then there is a step down. a crossing and a separation of the left foot. All right, great. Got all that? <laughs> we just go right to the question of the day? All right, I'll tell you what. Here is the short version of the breakdown and then the longer version. So from the end of the uh, first kick here, First of all, the right knee will bend, and then the left hand will cross over the right. Right hand turns palm up, left hand turns palm down. Step into the corner, cross left over the right, turn waist to the left. So now both hands are pointing into the left corner. The right hand opens up, almost like ward off again here and the left hand this time crosses over. There's your cross, step up. Once again, let me make sure I'm in frame here. The knee comes up, separates out as you open up the arms. Okay, if that's all you need, you know where to go. <laughs> Do not pass go, go directly to question of the day. But for those of you who want to stay with me, here is the next layer. A couple of things are happening here. When we talk about the separation of the right and left foot, um, this is not actually a straightforward kick out with toe. It's sometimes called that, but it's, that's a little inaccurate. It's a very funny kind of kick because it is a sort of a hidden kick. It is a, it is a, a I always think of it as a watered down version of a sidekick. Right? So the separation here is the foot coming in and then extending out this way. So the action of this kick is actually to chamber in and then sort of sweep out. A bit of a blending, if you will, of a straightforward toe kick and that side kick. And so you wind up with the kick going into the corner this way, but coming from almost like a swatting kind of motion. Hope that all makes sense. Anyway, here's how you get into it. I've just finished the first kick, the knee bends, and I step into the corner. Now, after I, I'm gonna drop the hands here. After I step into the corner, I'm going to pivot this foot so that it points straight forward and settle into a bow step. 
The back foot follows up, stepping up into a T-step, and then the knee rises up, but curls in slightly, sort of almost like you're again chambering for that side kick. So it bends across the middle, and then it swats out to the side, turning into a toe at the very end. So it doesn't go all the way out to the side here. It goes mildly into the corner, starting out on the side of the toes, turning into the front of the toes. If that's a little confusing, don't worry, we'll practice. We'll do some additional videos actually coming up as practice tips for some of these more challenging movements. All right, here's what the hands are doing. They were separated here. Remember I said that this right hand goes right over the top of the left, uh, right foot, the left hand 90 degrees out. As you begin to step down in the corner, right hand turns palm up, left hand turns palm down, and they circle once again. Another one of these circular patterns, left crossing over right, and so both hands are pointing into the left corner. Now from here, by this time you've stepped out into your corner and the right hand opens up, just sort of maintains its bowed shape here. Remember that arch, maintains its arch shape, almost like ward off, and then the left hand crosses over the wrist. Step in, the knee lifts and the kick separates out. And as the kick separates out, the two hands turn, palm out, and separate. As in the first kick, the left hand goes right over the top of the left foot, and the right hand 90 degrees away. All right, one more time facing in the camera here. Watch me one time, and then we're gonna turn the camera back around and go back to the regular view. All right, so here I am at the end of the first kick. separation of the left foot. One more time, camera comes flipping. Back to the original view here. I've just finished my first kick. One more time, one more view. I'm gonna turn around to face this direction here. Once again, just finished this first kick. <laughs> Forgot which side I was kicking on. Here's this first kick. Stepping into the corner, pointing to the other corner, opening out. separation of the left foot. Phew! Hang on to your hats for tomorrow. One more kick is coming. One of the frequent questions I get is about where do the eyes look during your Tai Chi? And so this is a tip for the day, tip for the week about where the eyes look, and it's the one tip that's gonna make your Tai Chi even better. So the thing is that the eyes are constantly looking into two places. One is towards an imaginary target. And the, here's the thing about this imaginary target. We imagine a mirror image of ourselves. So same height, same shape, same distance, so that as I step out and I look towards an imaginary target, I'm looking at a mirror image of myself. So my palm strikes will be going right to where that would go, you know, if it was another me facing me, or my arm would reach across the chest, or my leg would step out behind another leg, just the same size as mine. And so that's what you'd be doing. And when the eyes look at that imaginary target, that's where they're looking, right? But then the eyes are also looking 
at uh, something else, which is what we call the predominantly moving hand. And I should say that you look in these two different places depending on where in the movement you are. And the final position of the movement, you're looking at the target. So I finally get there, boom, I wanna be looking at that target. In fact, I wanna be looking at the target just a little bit before that because I wanna make sure I hit it, right? So I look at the target and that's where my eyes go. Then the movement goes into transition, the linking between the end of this movement and the beginning of the next one. And your hands are moving through space and your body is turning. And so the eyes are then following the moving hands. Now the predominantly moving hand is defined by the hand that is higher rather than lower and out in front rather than closer to the body. This changes so that sometimes during the transitions you'll be watching one hand and then suddenly you'll watch the other hand, right? So that's not a big deal, just you know you're watching the basically the hands and then switch back to watch the target, then watch the hands and then switch back to watch the target. Does that make sense? All right, now here's the thing that will really set your Tai Chi to that next level, make it really improve. How you watch, where your eyes are going, you know, how do you hold your head basically. And this is what I call the look down your nose at your topic, at your subject. There's lots of different ways of explaining this. Lots of, in, in years gone by when I taught in Hawaii, I used to say to all the surfers who came to class, I said, it's like you're standing neck deep in water looking for shark fins. So that you had a sense of the, eye, the head floating, but the eyes moving, right? Same thing here is when I say look down your nose. So the head is held up high and you're looking with your eyes, but not dropping your head. So when I follow my hand, I'm not like, you know, like a dog following, you know, the ball. Instead, rather, your, your head stays even, but your eyes are actively moving. Does that make sense? And this one thing will improve the performance of your Tai Chi. So I am watching the predominantly moving hand. I turn to watch the target. Then I'm going to make a change and I'm watching the hand again. Then I watch the target. All the while my head stays floating, my eyes look down my nose. And that's your tip of the week. That's just that one little thing that'll make your Tai Chi better. I hope that these are exciting to you or enjoyable or useful, <laughs> however, maybe all three. Uh, we're gonna do this every Thursday. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll go back to uh, answering a question of the day. So uh, thank you for those questions. If you've got a particular question about an aspect of Tai Chi that you think would improve your Tai Chi performance, you know what to do. Write it down in the comments section down there below. And uh, if you found any of the things that I've said so far confusing or you want some clarification on that, we'll go back and we'll cover it again anytime you want to. If you haven't already done so, you know what to do with the subscribe buttons. Hit that subscribe because I'd love to continue to send you more of these videos and if you haven't shared this the share button is really important also finally if you haven't come over to the website taijifit.net i've got a link for you in the description section right below this video go check it out we've got live classes we've got a bunch of free stuff over there um that's all i've got for today <sighs> once again i just want to say thank you for the opportunity to share this with you i really appreciate that you're being very generous with your time and spending time with me to learn some Tai Chi, and I thank you. Have a great day, great evening, great morning, and I'll see you in tomorrow's lesson.